We're just about to watch John Perry with his second dog in this final. He's the only handler to have two dogs in this final today. And this, this dog is called Breadbow Ash. Bred by John at his home in Breadbow. The sheep are settled nicely up the end there and Ash is running out nicely out to the right. It's sort of unusual for the one handler to have two dogs in a final at this level. Not really. So for three sheep trialling, a lot of the top handlers have quite a number of dogs. They might have, say, up to five open dogs. So if, if the luck goes their way, luck and good management in the rounds, then it, it is relatively common for those really top top profile handle is to have more than one dog in the finals. So John will be happy with his performance in terms of having the two dogs and indeed the performance of the two dogs that found their way into the final. Definitely and the pressure's off John a little bit. He's, he's sitting on top score currently with his first dog which was Del Rio Gem. So he'll be feeling a little less pressure with this dog Breadbow Ash but obviously if he can put up another good score He'll, he'll be more than happy. You'll notice this dog Ash is predominantly white and as we mentioned before this can work in their favour because the sheep are not as intimidated by dogs that are lighter coloured. They, they'll let the dog work a bit closer. You can see already that Ash is working a lot closer than what Hurricane was but the sheep are nowhere near as upset by her as they were by Hurricane. So she'll, she should be able to settle these sheep a little easier. Hurricane had a pretty hard time of, of getting his sheep settled, unfortunately. Ash is largely white, but wears a little black hood on the head. Yes. Black mask. But you think that uh, being largely white, that will make a difference compared to a dog like Hurricane? It doesn't always. It, it depends a little on the sheep as well, but it, it is enough that it is noticeable. White dogs can generally settle their sheep a little easier. They can get a little closer to the sheep without the sheep getting upset. You can see Ash is really working quite close to those sheep in comparison to some of the other dogs we've seen today. And those sheep are still staying pretty calm. This this is a very tidy cast, lift and draw so far. It's difficult to see that um, any one of those three sheep is troublesome at this point. We had a little stamp of the foot there. The sheep furthest on the left is a little concerned by the dog stamping the foot but happy enough to move off with his mates when the dog comes in and puts pressure on so as long as he can avoid upsetting it too much. Here it is again just having a look. Yep there's a stomp. But that's been a fairly tidy move down the corridor to start. Very it? tidy, very straight which is what we're aiming for. We want one a straight line from when the dog is first in contact with the sheep up the end. We want them to move in a straight line down to the handler, which Ash has done a very tidy job of that. And you can hear that John hasn't really said much to this dog. She knows her job. She's doing it without too much input. She's just got to push them into that delivery area before John can move on. And I think that they're all in now. So before he moves off, John will try and get those sheep in a good position and set himself up for a successful walk up his first corridor. So he'll need to turn them all around, ready for the walk up the corridor. Ideally, he'll settle them in on his right hip, facing forward, so that when he moves, that was pretty tidy. They, um, they have the dog on one side, keeping them straight, and him on the other, providing a bit of a visual barrier. Ash has just come in to give them a little hurry up. They were just getting left behind a bit. And we're underway. Ash is working quite closely there. There's a big contrast here, isn't there, between the last lot of sheep. These sheep are more inclined to stop and look at the dog instead of go for a big bolt across the field. <laughs> and Ash is able to work a lot closer. So they're really still stopping and sizing Ash up and having to think about what they might like to do next but um, Ash has got them pretty well where she wants them. It's a, this is a pretty nice start to this run. The sheep are pretty relaxed although we've just just poked out of the corridor there. Not by much. Ash will just try and bump them back in. Here we go. We've got a little bit of a showdown here. Dog and sheep and that was well handled there by Ash. 
and the judge is in the little four-wheel drive quad bike moving around the outside to get a closer look. It's kind of interesting that um, that movement and a little bit of sound doesn't put the dog off, doesn't seem to bother the sheep. We're just He's just far enough away, I think, that it's just fading into the background noise for the, the sheep and the dog. And of course, spectators here, here are um, encouraged to stay fairly quiet and no clapping and so on until the end of the run, just so that uh, the dog and handler can have as much quiet as possible. Of course, these, these dogs are used to usually working out in the paddock with nobody in sight except their owner and perhaps up to a few thousand sheep. So an atmosphere like this with spectators and strange dogs watching and vehicles and tents is very out of the ordinary for a lot of these dogs. So they're, they're pretty remarkable that they can focus on the job at hand with all of this unusual activity going on around them. Well, they've wound around the first winding peg and uh, moving pretty smoothly and quickly over to, the, over to the second winding peg. This is a really nice start to this run. I think John will be pretty happy with how this is going so far. He, he wouldn't have lost too many points yet. A couple, couple of little departures from the corridor. But um, you, lo you lose points for your sheep heading out of the corridor and also for how far out they get. So if they only just dip out over the line, you're not going to lose as many points as if they go for a big run and get halfway down the field before you can get them back under control. So they're moving towards the race fairly quickly. John's taken his position in the hoop and they're set up pretty nicely. So we'll see how Ash goes directing them through this race. They're pretty relaxed, these sheep. They're in the mouth of the race. Not exactly looking in the direction that John and Ash would have them look. It's a, it's a difficult, um, difficult thing when all the sheep are stopped and looking at the dog because you run the risk that the sheep will run back out over the dog instead of turning around where you would like them to go, which we did see a little bit with Hurricane in the last run. That's some really nice work from Ash there, holding them tight in the mouth of that obstacle, and yes, and they're moving she's got them the through. Race. That's Very beautiful good. work. So there wouldn't be any points lost at that obstacle, I don't think, for John and Ash. And off they head towards the bridge. And Ash is coming back, I was about to say back through the race, but turned and went around the outside in the way that you described before. Now I forgot to set my timer for this run, but I think we'll find so far he's running pretty well on time. It's been, um, it's all been happening smoothly and quickly so far here for John and Breadbo Ash. It seemed to be a fairly quick run, hasn't it? So far, yes, and nothing majorly gone wrong. You can see the sheep are very relaxed. They're stopping, they're having a graze. Ash just had to give them a little hurry up so they didn't get left too far behind John as he's walking. So there's, there's a rule in this type of trialing. Once you start walking in between obstacles, you must not stop. You can't stop and you can't speed up and slow down. So it's the dog's responsibility to keep those sheep keeping up with you, not getting too far ahead or too far behind. Otherwise, you're losing points. So John's moving at a fairly regular pace between the, the obstacles, and he's now taken up spot um, ready for the bridge work. Yes, so there's a hoop or, or a circle drawn on the ground at every obstacle, and that's where the handler has to take up their position. And they're not allowed to help the dog in any way except for whistle and vocal commands. So the dog has to do all the work itself. And this is pretty nice. Look at that. Ash has Those got sheep them have headed the straight up onto the bridge, but stopped in the middle. So Ash has had to come up behind them, give them some encouragement. And this Ash is, is a, working very closely. This is a risky spot here. Well done. So John's pulled her back off the bridge to make sure she didn't accidentally cross coming off. And Ash has taken a wide arc around. I would venture to say this is the tidiest run we've had so far to this point in this final. So if he can keep it together for this last corridor and then into the pen. He might, might be going to knock himself out of top spot. <laughs> I'm sure he won't complain about that. Well, you don't mind knocking somebody out of top spot when it's you, do you? you can just see, see the stark difference here compared to the last run. 
Absolutely. This dog's working harder to keep the sheep moving, whereas the last dog was working hard to keep them steady and in, in the right spot. So really mark mark difference in how the sheep are reacting to this dog versus the last dog. We're going to have full bellies at the end of this run, these sheep. Absolutely. A few snacks on the way. Taking full advantage of that nice green, green grass out there. Now they're moving over towards the pen. So that's about perfect where they are. They're just sitting on John's right hip, moving along nice and calmly. They're set up well for this pen. And the dog hasn't upset them at all. So I forgot to set my timer, but I think John will have looked, just looked at his timer. Most of the competitors carry a timer on them so that they know how they're looking in regards to the 15 minute time limit. And he, he should have plenty of time left here at the pen. The rest of the course has gone really smoothly. You prefer to carry a timer, do you, Glancer? Yes, it, it, it's helpful. If you, if you get to the pen and you've got 30 seconds, you might push a little harder <laughs> to try, try and complete it. Whereas if you've got time, you can, you can do what John's doing here and just go nice and slowly and carefully. Try and get it first time, which it looks like he's going to. Those sheep are moving in. This is going to be a pretty big score, I predict, for John and Bread Bow Ash. He's just got to make sure that all those feet are across the line, which they are now, I think. And, and Ash he's is moving well into in, the gate. Ash is well into that, and sense of Ash knows what she's there to do. Oh, that's a very tidy run. Yeah. Well done to John Perry running Bread Bow Ash. That's going to be a contender for the well top Well done. Spot, so that's think. John Perry from Breadbow in New South Wales. He was competitor number 90 with Breadbow Ash. John went into this final run with a score of 178. So we will add this score to him as soon as I get it from the judge. Our last competitor for today is Mick Hudson. He was competitor number 156. Mick is running a little dog called Echo Park Mill. John Perry, 75. John, sorry, 95. Oh, I was very confused for a second then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 95 is much more on the money. So I believe that that'll push John into first place, knocking his first dog off the top spot. So 95. A 95.